in this subcontinent because of societal pressures economic pressures etc the science stream is preferred by students and when students are directionless their parents so children uh, uh children uh, grow up thinking that there are two avenues in life one is medicine and one is uh, engineering and in order to get into careers in those streams they choose the science stream and they become engineers and doctors however something strange happened in the last decade or so uh, which is that the social media sphere kind of grew into prominence now in the social media sphere what happens is that there are a lot of conversations about india in the course of everyday life and these conversations tend to be about politics and society and culture and religion and art etc nobody actually talks about engineering and medical topics in the course of normal everyday social media life an entire generation which is my generation and perhaps even sections of the generation above me behind me uh grew up under the impression that if you choose science you are the higher strata of society i consciously do not want to compare it to the caste system because that is its own thing and it will feature in this conversation later on also uh, because it it has other kinds of ramifications but an entire generation grew up thinking that choosing science as their uh, stream choosing science as their uh, as choosing science subjects to study is better objectively better than choosing art subjects and of, of course these people all became engineers and today we are at a place i'm fast forwarding a little bit i'll get back to what i was saying today we are in a place where uh, people are like you know uh, most of the utter superstitious garbage that you receive on whatsapp forwards and online generally speaking uh you will find that a lot of people who send these things to you are highly educated engineers and doctors you know gomutra ke bare mein ya some scientific ritual in the religion etc so science stream clearly hasn't given people scientific thinking that's one part of the problem the second part of the problem is that people go for the so called science stream and what is devalued as a result of it what is devalued is the art stream what is devalued is the humanities and humanities include subjects like psychology sociology etc you will find there are a lot of people who are engineers and doctors tend to think that they are automatically experts in these areas also without ever having studied them so i'm going to go back to the twitter thread that i wrote a few years ago and tell people like read you read it out to you but uh, the general idea is that the things we complain about in the course of our complaints about the state of democracy in india etc it all kind of has to do with the fact that people have lost sight of what a citizen is what rights are what equality means and these are all things that these supposedly devalued humanities subjects te- uh, teach us right these are areas these are avenues of modern life that are explored by these humanities subjects engineering does not teach you about democracy medicine does not teach you about the rights of a citizen these are technical domains and people who are experts in these domains have my complete respect the problem that i am going to talk about today is that the people who want to be respected people who should be respected for technical domain education regardless of their skill in that their area of choice should not be treated as if they are experts in every single area including areas like sociology by the way uh, a huge number of people who are uh, c- called anti national these days are sociology people are social workers the ngos who work for the upliftment of the marginalized communities this broadly falls not under science but under humanities it is my fair conviction that the troubles that india is going through right now a huge part of it is due to india's bias against art stream and this has been decades in the making it's not a new problem we are seeing the repercussions of it right now we are seeing large numbers of people who are completely oblivious to what democracy is supposed to be to what secularism means 
to history for example history is also a humanity subject the people who are of the opinion that mythological texts contain historical data are the same people who did not study or at least did not pay attention to history in school because you know history will not make you an engineer so in a way our disregard for humanity subjects in school as well as college has brought us to this point where democracy itself appears to be in peril so let me read this out to you and i wrote this in 2018 by the way september 13 2018 it goes the other day on a whatsapp group a software engineer a school friend shared a meme that pretty much said that rising petrol prices are okay because at least the bjp is saving us from bangladeshis and rohingyas and such like before that a doctor another school friend and a trained psychiatrist said that i had violated his freedom of expression by blocking him on facebook i had blocked him because even after multiple warnings he had been spamming my comment threads with the defense of a rapist when i told him that freedom of expression is something that exists between him and the state and not between him and me he did not get it he did not understand that freedom of expression did not mean he was free to spew vile bulge bilge on other people's social profiles i want to try to explain this lack of understanding and this is not just a lack of understanding it is a full on denial not just of facts but of the ways of thinking that the humanities teach these boys were science students they spent their school lives focusing on science and math and did reasonably well there they targeted technical careers and got through they worked towards building stable futures for themselves as defined by our, by our middle class sensibility they are products and supporters of a system that looks down upon the arts and the humanities they devoted themselves to technical skills in a society where art students were destined for failure they studied math and physics and medicine and became doctors and engineers they made it they won their families demanded large dowries for them because they had that much social capital on account of being doctors and engineers they were not failures like art students and what did the art kids do they resigned themselves to second rate lives lives that society had assigned to them they studied history sociology political science and economics the broad view the disciplines that form the foundations of human culture were all that was left to the art students then out of nowhere the internet happened it was the early 2000s and blogs and an infant social media universe came into being it wasn't tech heavy the art student like it liked it for the first time since school they had a playground they had avenues to explore their subjects with a level of depth their schools had never provided and their colleges could not care less about and because many of them could not afford a liberal arts education abroad this is small town india after all they made the best of the internet they studied read communicated with experts and even began to use the web to publish their own work and find their voice they started getting what had been denied to them by our education system a sense of self worth and even the right to consider themselves intelligent i want to go back to this sentence a little bit the right to consider themselves intelligent because this is also something that happens to our students throughout their educational careers they put in the dumb kid category for the simple reason that their talents lie not in the subjects that science students go for if someone is extremely interested in history if someone is extremely interested in drawing if someone is extremely interested in music or even sports for that matter they are in the dumb category if someone is good at math they are in the smart category our way of defining intelligence itself is shaped by this preference for math and science <clears throat> there was no road map for them to follow so they taught themselves and went into journalism advertising writing and law they became web publishers they started websites they began to mold a kind of heaven from the hell that they had been condemned to now the science students the ones who had been too good for the humanities once want a piece of this pie the public discourse pie the place where much of the talk is about politics economics history and media many of them find that they cannot they lack the education for it and they just can't digest it because their lives have been lives of educational privilege they have always been the top rung of indian society they were brought up on the lie that they are better than everyone else they have always been the ones destined for success remember success we talked about it in the last episode and the one before that for the first time in their privileged lives they find themselves having to contend with the fact that they might not actually be good at everything 
on an average day it is hard to get these people to shut up about their houses and their salaries and their houses on days when the talking point is politics or economics or some other matter that they threw away because only girls study arts they should have been in courts because this is something that is said about arts that only girls study arts and it is meant as an insult but obviously it is not true and also it is even if girls study arts they are not becoming less than because they study arts on days when the talking point is politics or economics or some other matter that they threw away because only girls study arts they are positively sick with fomo they feel left out so is it any surprise that our educated middle class is raging against media and intellectuals and experts and stars and writers and artists look at all these categories look at all the rhetoric that you have heard in the last few years about exactly these things the media is bad intellectuals are anti national uh, experts are bad clearly anti anti vaxxers experts don't know anything stars bollywood is bad writers and artists are bad make no mistake this is the cream of india's educational caste system fighting back against its lost privilege so it's not surprising at all that an alternate ecosystem has popped up to cater to the insecurities of the science stream caste it tells them that they are victims it feeds them sweet nothings from morning till night over whatsapp remember the remember that the right wing was the first to start waging war on the tech and social media fronts they started the first blogs and had the first it cells they were the ones with armies of software engineers they still do by the way most bhats i don't have any data to support this but it seems that every single me- message that i get from a bhakt it's a software engineer of some sort cut to 2018 tell a software guy holding forth about politics and economics on a whatsapp group that he's wrong about something and you will get called an elitist or a liberal tell a doctor that what he has written makes sense neither on the logical level nor the grammatical one and he will ask you what makes you an expert and the fact that correct grammar is just a way for liberals to establish their superiority now flip it imagine an art student lecturing them about their areas of expertise engineering or medicine they would be justified in calling it out because the boy who studied economics and literature is not qualified to comment on these topics he simply lacks the education why is it then that privileged members of the science caste consider themselves capable of holding forth on humanity subjects even th- even though they never had that education they literally rejected that education they were applauded for not being interested you've seen this also right koi bachcha agar bole hai ki mera matlab kya drawing vagaira mein sports mein interested nahi hai nahi to acha acha tu tu baith ke math pad tu engineer banega they were applauded literally for not liking certain subjects they were applauded obviously for being interested in certain other subjects and of course there is also the sad story of students who were thrown into science despite them not having the aptitude for it and then they had to resign themselves to a life of doing something that they don't want to do or don't enjoy doing i'll tell you why the doctors and engineers i'm talking about did not value the humanities when they were in school and college and they don't value them now you will have to physically restrain them to keep them from boasting about the fact that they won the race of life but when it comes to things that arts kids do they seem to be of the view ye sab to koi bhi kar sakta hai in the present political and social climate intellectuals liberals media persons and artists are not being vilified because of the things they are saying they are the villains because in the eyes of the science caste they were never supposed to amount to anything they were supposed to be amusements sources of entertainment and cautionary tales for them to scare their children with so that they never choose the arts in many ways this ye sab to koi bhi kar sakta hai thinking permeates our entire culture people don't think art is worth money people tell designers to work for free because it can't possibly be that hard but the worst possible consequence of our attitude towards the humanities is currently playing out in the political and social arena our educated middle class thanks to a lack of education is screwing us over even though most of my positions in that thread remain the same i do want to take some stuff back i should not have compared it to the caste system i was kind of sort of oblivious to that back then to the 2018 mein thoda kam aware tha so i don't want to compare it to the caste system directly in any case but there is an a caste aspect to this that we will get to there was this article uh, yes in the print that 
kind of goes into this. Let me share this also. This was an article in the print written by Renny Thomas. And I hope you can see it. Yes. Brahmins on India's elite campuses say studying science is natural to upper castes. So there is this idea that Brahmins are smarter. And the way that idea manifests is that they put their children into subjects that will cause them to have greater social capital. And this has percolated into the myth that science may Brahmins do better because they are naturally smarter than people from supposedly lower castes, which is utter bullshit, obviously. I, we just spoke about how many of these people will send you WhatsApp forwards about complete pseudoscientific garbage. You, you see the link here, right? You see the link between uh, our disdain for art subjects and how it has fed caste biases and served as a platform for even more casteism, even more disdain against the art subjects. And it has created a generation of Indians who are oblivious to the things that only humanities can teach. There is a book by Martha Nussbaum on the matter. I'll just, uh, here it is, Not For Profit, it is called. It's called Why Democracy Needs the Humanities. Martha Nussbaum, Not For Profit, Why Democracy Needs the Humanities. Uh, the idea behind this book is that science subjects, or rather, let's not talk about it in pro-science things, or rather that uh, our social bias against the humanities is causing democracy all over the world to suffer. I'll just read the first paragraph of the foreword. The humanities and arts play a central role in the history of democracy. And yet today, many parents are ashamed of children who study art or literature, literature or art. Literature and philosophy have changed the world, but parents all over the world are more likely to fret if their children are financially illiterate than if their children in the than if their training in the humanities is deficient. Even at the University of Chicago's laboratory school, the school that gave birth to philosopher John Dewey's path-breaking experiments in democratic education reform, many parents worry that their children are not being schooled enough for financial success. Now, it is nobody's case that financial success is not important. It is nobody's case that science should not be taught. Uh, it is nobody's case that subjects that are not humanities subjects are unimportant. That is not being said here. When I wrote that thread, a lot of people complained saying that science is also important. Now, the whole point of the thread was that nobody is denying that science is important. Clearly, science is important. I am someone who talks about the need for science education all the time. But... We are not actually being taught science, right? This mad rush towards science subjects that is the defining characteristic of the Indian education system is not creating scientifically literate people. It's creating people who are going into, it's, it's, these are people who are going into the sciences to secure a job, not because they're interested in sciences. Our job market almost exclusively caters to technical positions. It is deficient in arts-based careers. When I talk about the importance of humanities, I'm not saying that whatever humanities will go into Superman. Ke lega, se. I am saying that not only do we need to send, not only do we need to keep the humanities option wide open for children and not discourage them when they choose to join it, we also need to teach humanities better. Because look at how humanities will be taught in a system that is naturally leaning towards the science stream. It will be devalued. The, the, kinds of, the kind of teachers who choose to become humanities subject teachers will be substandard. The kind of course material will be substandard. The kind of attention students receive in that stream will be substandard. The kind of careers they go into will be substandard. We have effectively, through this kind of behavior, condemned huge chunks of our young population to second rate lives, not because they are not skilled, not because they are not intelligent, not because there is no scope in humanity subjects worldwide or in a conceptual, in, an, in some kind of objective way. It is because we have not cultivated those markets. We have not cultivated those areas. And in addition to that, when people do go into those areas and when they do come out and they do become something valuable, we continue to devalue their importance as society. Social workers are less valued than 
engineers and doctors even though a huge a huge amount of a, a huge number of problems that engineers and doctors are actively trying to solve will be solved faster if sociological attention could be paid to them